Wednesday, the New York Times. This is very nice. Um, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of stuff there. We have markets, economy, energy, media, technology, blah, blah, blah. All about business. Okay, I also have students, because I like to have a wide variety of news, I also have them looking, say for example, at Al Jazeera. There's also a business section on Al Jazeera. I want them to see as many viewpoints as possible because I want them to think critically. And I want them to look at, okay, that's interesting. This is being said in this media, but this is being said in this other media. So, what's my opinion about what's going on? So, that's what I want them to be doing. Um, Huffington Post, again, or for the business section. That's another newspaper that I frequently have them uh, use. Here's an example of the business section from that. Um, it's fun because it's very inter interactive. You might also have them do a blog based on what they were doing. Business Business Ethics, Magazine of Corporate Responsibility. So I like that because I really want them to start being introduced to business ethics, right? Because <laughs> it's something they're going to have to know about, and we may not be teaching them. In terms of business ethics as well, so it's really hard for me today to say that word for some reason, I might also have them look into the ethicist. Is that the right spelling? Ethicist? No, it's not right? What did I do wrong? Oh, you're saying you're just like <laughs> being. Okay. So the ethicist. Just Google this. This is on NPR. And what I do is I Google the ethicist NPR. What's nice about the ethicist is you have, I think his name is Randy Cohen. Yeah. I think that's it. So you may want to add Randy Cohen to that. But he talks about ethics. So people will write in with a question about, hey, this occurred. What would the ethical thing to do be? And then he has a discussion on what would the ethical thing to do be. And so it's really interesting to have the students listen to that and then discuss, you know, is that ethical for this cultural context? Do you agree with the ethicist? Because sometimes I found that my students, you know, they were like, no. <laughs> they didn't agree with the ethicist. So it was nice to have those discussions, though, because it helped widen their view. And it also helped to teach ethics. <laughs> okay, so that's the end of um, the different newspapers or journals that I use. Occasionally, I run to the Harvard Gazette, which is online, and they have pretty good business articles occasionally, but not always. A lot of it is obviously about Harvard and like what's going on, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So another thing that I like them to use are prezies, because a lot of students are very familiar with the style of presentation that I'm doing right now. So we're going through PowerPoint. It's like boom, 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 step, 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 step. But what Prezi's do is they kind of mix everything up. They make the PowerPoint more interactive and more interesting to watch. And they also encourage them to think like, when you design a Prezi, you actually have to sit down and think, okay, what is the metaphor I'm going to use to convey this idea? And so you have to really, you know, is it going to be the tree of life or something similar? What is it that is seemingly unconnected, but very connected to my topic. Um, so that's why I like Prezi's for business. Another part of Prezi's, as you can see, is you have resumes and portfolios. So in the business world, this is very important to have a resume that, or a CV that you are writing. You can do them online. Um, and portfolios, what have they produced? If they're a graphic designer, they definitely have to have a portfolio, right? How are they going to get hired if they don't? <laughs> you have to be able to say, yes, I designed this. Isn't it wonderful? I designed this too. And I designed this, and it made millions of dollars. So hire me. 
Um, and then we also have Prezi's for students and educators. So this would be something that if you're not teaching business, you could also do with students who are not in the business um, field. So present me. You can either put your own presentations up or you can watch presentations that have already been put up. There are millions of presentations online of all manner of speaking. And what's nice about this is this prepares students for um, long distance sorts of presentations. Like if they were to do something over Skype, your way of being when you're online is much, much different than your way of being when you're with an audience, right, in the flesh. So what's nice about this is on this side, you would have the PowerPoint or a video or whatever it was that you wanted to show the people you were talking to, and obviously you have yourself. And so you just, you're talking them through the slides. This is really nice, and I really think that this will be used for something similar, because there's a lot of software like this out there. I think even Google has something like this for free. Mm -hmm. But um, what I like about this is you can you can be dealing with business in California <coughs> and living in Ukraine and need to make a presentation, put it online, and when they wake up in the morning, they can go in their presentation room, they can watch it, they can email you questions, and you don't actually have to stay up until 3 o'clock in the morning to make the presentation when you're dead tired, mm -hmm. right? So it's, it's very nice, and that's why I think it will become more and more popular. Um, I think it's also really interesting to think about how to be when you're having a Skype call and to practice it because students have to watch themselves in order to put everything together and so they <clears throat> they really get clear about <laughs> woo it doesn't work when you know I didn't realize that I'm always going like this you know <laughs> or like playing with my hair or something like that and that doesn't work I have a really really embarrassing one that I read about the other day it was so gross <laughs> And I'm going to share it with you because it was so gross. <laughs> anyway, so I was reading The New Yorker, which is this famous magazine that comes out of New York, obviously. And it normally has literary content in it. But occasionally there are other stories and some s political stuff as well. And one of the commenters was talking about this man who he had a long-distance Skype phone call with. And the guy... First of all, he put the computer so close to him that it was like a big head. <laughs> and then he had cut himself shaving and put a Band-Aid under it, over it, sorry. And so he was so nervous during the conversation, he was just going like this a lot, and he accidentally scratched the Band-Aid off, and it started bleeding, and then he was putting blood all over his face. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? <laughs> and the people watching were just like, ah! <laughs> but nobody really, what do you say? Let's take a break. You might want to go to the bathroom and look at yourself in the mirror, right? So if he had practiced ahead of time with something like Prezi, this would not have been an issue. So it's uh, something to think about. <laughs> um, and this is, again, another Prezi for business. Oops, I think this just gives you the last, the next slide. Yes, Prezi for nonprofits, Prezi for conferences. TED uses Prezi. And you can see that their, um, their style of presentations is very animated and very interactive. And that's really, really nice. I was actually, in a little aside, I was thinking about that today because I was at a symposium at National Aviation University this morning giving a talk. My talk was very different from everybody else's talk. Everybody else was just reading. And I am have my PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. I'm, like, going through bits and pieces. I read a little bit. But people were just like, <laughs> I got the sense that some of them didn't take me seriously because I was not reading from an academic mm -hmm. paper. You know, I was condensing the academia into a PowerPoint and sharing through storytelling 
which in my mind is more effective, but it was a very interesting cultural moment this morning. So that just, it's in terms of like business, that was a good learning experience. <laughs> okay, project-based learning. Um, an example of this would be product creation and sales, which I mentioned to you when I talked about the university project where they had to create a university and sell it. Um, a company creation. These are examples. You know, you could go through the steps in creating and branding a company and trying to get it on the market. Um, ooh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to kick you. One wonderful thing, you know, I'm always on about Khan Academy because I think it's brilliant. But did you know that on Khan Academy you have finance and capital markets? You have a whole portion on economics. And so you could use this for your independent learning to link them to the site. And then they get a specific report from Khan Academy saying, I've completed this much successfully. What better assessment tool do you need? Right? Because it's got all the, it shows how much time they've been on there, how many videos they've watched, etc., etc. Um, in terms of the writing, I also have them linked to Grammar Girl. So Grammar Girl, they can go through and if they have questions about specific things like the difference, uh, when do you use who and when do you use whom? It's confusing. When do you use which? When do you use that? Also confusing sometimes for students. So they can go to this site when they recognize that they have something that they have a confusion about, or have confusion about, not a confusion, and they can, they can look at it and listen and get grammar lectures online. How fantastic is that, right? Because what they probably maybe should have learned, you know, six months ago or one year ago, if they forgot it, it's no problem because they can find it again. And she does a very good job of explaining and giving examples. So I like, I mean, I myself use Grammar Girl because my grammar is not always so fabulous. And I do have questions like, wait a minute, who and whom? I've forgotten since fifth grade when I learned that. You know, <laughs> it's been a few years. <laughs> so we go back to um, personalized education to the people you are actually teaching. So I hope that through this presentation you can see how it was personalized or could be personalized to the students that we're teaching through the different um, common module activities that I introduced as well as through the different autonomous independent learning ideas or activities that I introduced. So the last thing is um, again go see Mr. Robinson, Sir Ken Robinson, he has a really, really great one. Do schools kill creativity? Sometimes. He says they definitely do. <laughs> and I, I think that you should all go and watch it, and we can talk about it next time. <laughs> maybe, maybe that can be one of the uh, Friday afternoon discussion group topics. Do skill, schools kill creativity? Um, he has some very definite <laughs> ideas about that. Thanks for your time and attention. Um, please don't forget to look for us um, at eConnect, the social network for teachers and learners of English. It is um, up and coming. We just started it last fall, and we're still working on making it better. We have some ideas. But if you join, you can see like the Relo's there, our Relo assistants are there, the fellows are there, um, and so, we hope to continue to make it bigger so that as teachers, we can connect with each other. And then finally, some of the references for this presentation are um, Brown, HD, Brown, JD, uh, Clark, and that those are mainly for curriculum design and effective curriculum management, and then Graves, Kathleen Graves for designing language courses. Okay. So now I need to find you that language cloud website so that you know how to find it before I forget, and then I'll take questions. Is that cool?